Now, just for fun, can you, can you identify what makes you you in your experience right now? Can you locate it? It's quite difficult, isn't it? It's everywhere, it's nowhere, it's there, it's not there. Oh, what is it? Oh my God, what's he, what's he asking me? So, in balanced view, we have a very, very simple technique to identify what we're talking about in this, in this, uh, in this training. The basis of your experience, without which nothing can be known. Now, we call this open intelligence. You may have your own word for it, and it's fine. Love, God, openness, presence. It doesn't matter. But without that fundamental basis, nothing could be known. Even you, as a physical entity, your experience of being a human being, an individual, could not be known or experienced. So it's very important that you identify what that is. Because I spent 20 years looking for that, not really knowing what it is, and having nobody showing me what it is. 20 years of seeking for something that I didn't know what it was. I mean, can you see the dilemma? Even if I found it, how would I know I found it? <laughs> so anyway, so like we heard, if you just stop thinking, stop describing right now, what do you recognize in your experience? Now obviously, sensations and thoughts immediately come back, so stop thinking again. Stop describing. What do you identify in your experience? There's something looking through your eyes, listening to me speak, an openness, an alertness, <coughs> that is the capacity to know, that is open intelligence. So you already have it. You're not getting anything by coming to this training. You've got what we're talking about. So that's quite good, isn't it? So the practice, the only practice of this training is to recognize that openness, that opening intelligence, for short moments, whenever you remember throughout your day. So the actual instruction is short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, become continuous. So in the balanced view training, the basis of your experience, open intelligence, is the same for every human being. That basis, that fundamental basis, is identical for every human being. It doesn't matter what your value systems are, where you're from, what your religion is. The capacity to know is the same for every human being. The term we use to describe all of the thoughts, emotions, value systems, people, places and things that we experience is data. So the basis of experience is open intelligence and all of the data arise spontaneously, ceaselessly, countlessly and unpredictably. And that's just, that's just, that just, I mean I find that amazing. Like right now, just sit here right now, what's going on? There's loads going on. There's loads and loads of stuff going on. Sensations, sounds. Then, then you recognize open intelligence, like a blazing alertness, then, then a thought, then an emotion. And so we as human beings have trained ourselves to only focus on the descriptions. We've only focused usually on a tiny set of descriptions. So f in my case, it was uh, depression, boredom, anxiety, panic attacks, wanting to have more sex, very small collection of things. And I was convinced that everything in my life revolved around me rearranging this tiny set of descriptions into a better set of descriptions. You know, very, very limited view of life, a pinhead, you could say. And, and, and generally speaking, this is the approach that we all have applied to our lives for many, many years. We believe that our well-being can be located in rearranging our thoughts, emotions, circumstances, people, places and things. So we basic, the basic mechanism is wanting to cultivate more positive states and hold on to them, modify and eradicate the negative states and there's lots of neutral things we don't really care about. Now just to, to re-emphasize that your, your collection of, of that, that, that data, that way of approaching life, is different to everyone. So some things you consider to be very positive, other people will hate. And so it's very important to recognize what a gift all of your thoughts and emotions are, and, the, and that mechanism, what a gift that is. Because when you start to recognize that in your experience, that how robotic your response is to all of this stuff, what you're actually recognizing is the mechanism by which we as human beings collectively are trying to sort ourselves out. So if you as an individual are trying to eradicate depression and hatred and anger from your life, 
in order to feel okay, that's no different from a country trying to eradicate another country in order to feel better. We, don't li we do not like the way this, this, uh, these people do what, whatever they're doing. It makes us feel uncomfortable. We cannot handle this discomfort, so we're going we're to punish them or make them change so that we feel better. So you have that mechanism all the time in your life. So an appearance comes up, and uh, in the Balanced View training, it's made very, very simple. You have four options. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm really intelligent. Four, four options. <laughs> okay, the, fir the first is to uh, in, um, indulge the, what, what comes up. So say anger comes up, then you're off. I'm angry because of this person spoke to me in this way. They always speak to me like that. How dare they speak to me like that? Then you might start thinking about other times that you were angry in your life and what happened and start maybe even indulging in guilt or blame or judgment. And then my response would be something like, okay, I'm not going to speak to this person for six months and they'll know how angry they, they've made me. So that's one option, indulging, avoiding. I, w I won't go and see my father because he, I just can't be with him for more than 10 seconds before I want to kill him. Avoid him, physically. And replacing, that's a, that's a good one. I am love, I am happiness, 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 I am love. <laughs> like, so, you know, all these strategies in, in order to try and modify what's going on. What, and, but there is a fourth, a fourth choice, and that's just to leave everything alone. Oh my God. So the instruction of short moments is a direct instruction that you can apply to your experience essentially to allow you to get used to leaving things alone. So when anger arises, for a short moment you relax and acknowledge the presence of open intelligence. So you, especially if you're new, you can actually apply the instruction of stopping thinking to identify open intelligence. Then everything comes back, so it's repeated many times. Now, in the beginning, it might mean you might feel very weird. For example, being in an argument with your father, and, 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 and you're just going, you're going short moments, short moments, short moments like that, just relaxing, and, and you're not actually saying anything. And, uh, and, and this was my direct experience. But I tell you, not saying anything is a much more positive approach to a conflict than trying to sort it out by saying something. I learned that very quickly. So right there and then, that's a top tip, just don't say anything. There is nothing to protect or defend. And you can ask yourself very honestly, have you ever been able to change someone's opinion about something they passionately believe? No, I haven't. And I'm very, very good and very, very, I can logically, basically prove that what somebody thinks or their belief system is um, invalid and mine is better. Doesn't mean that they, they go, oh yeah, Adrian, you're so wise, well done, thank you. <laughs> They, 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 they get even more angry and they get even more determined that they're right and I'm wrong. So you see, again, that mechanism is the same by which we as human beings try to sort out problems collectively. So the, the, the fourth choice to, to, to rely on open intelligence whenever you remember is supported by the other support structures of the Balanced View Training which basically are explicit instructions for you to allow things to be as they are. Now, if you go walking down the beautiful Ganga and just look at what's going on, you know, the river, the fish, there's no, there's no effort involved in, in anything in the natural world. So these, these flowers, did, they didn't need to, to grunt and think and visit, visit psychoanalysts to, to sort out the beautiful flower. They didn't need to say, oh, I'm a, I'm a beautiful red flower, I'm a beautiful red flower, over and over again. It just, it just happens. And, and they're, not, they're not sitting there going, why, why wasn't I born a rose? I want to be a rose. <coughs> it's not fair. And then if you come back in a few days, if we were to leave these flowers out, they, they'd decay. You know? and, and this is the beauty of the natural world. Now, we as human beings have trained ourselves to believe that our, our thoughts, emotions, circumstances, sensations, data, are not part of this perfection. when well, they blatantly are. So the, the mechanism by which this flower comes into existence from nothing, a vivid display, it's beautiful, it decays and then it vanishes back into nothing, it's happening all of the time. 
in our experience. Now we've just labelled this as a problem. So I'm sure everyone in this room is trying to work on something. I mean, I know I was. Trying to purify something in order to be able to recognise what I'm looking for. But you see, the nature of reality is that everything basically is evidence of the nature of reality. If everything is a unified expanse, everything is a unified expanse and everything is evidence of that. So you, you can't work on anything in a, you know, like it's, it's, it's pointless. The only way you can recognize this natural perfection is to recognize the natural perfection. So the instruction of short moments is very, very profound. So again, if you just stop thinking right now, identify what we're describing in your experience, and, and like Nina says, you can practice this today. When something happens uh, in, in the street, or you know, and this is why I love India, it's so dynamic and it provides you with so many amazing opportunities to, to try this new approach. Instead of reacting in the same old way, indulging, avoiding or replacing, what happens when you just recognize open intelligence? And then you do it again. I think you'll be totally amazed at the effect this has. I, I basically, when I first came to this training, I, I, like I would say most people, had applied constructive criticism to everything in my life in order to try and make sense of the world. So what that means is I, I, I always look at what doesn't work in order to improve. Now of course that, that has some benefits, but it's very, very negative. And I'm sure you all know this, even if you've done something really amazing in your life, what do you and all your friends do? Pick it, pick it apart and to see what, what wasn't right and what, what, wasn't, you know, what could be improved. So in this training we don't do that so much and eventually you'll stop doing that. You start to recognise the beneficial nature and the beneficial potency. It directly is an experiential recognition that negative things such as anger, depression, panic attacks, boredom, sexual desire, and that's you know, positive, negative, that could be one of two things. But you start to see, just by relying on open intelligence, that these things, they are inseparable from that fundamental basis. Not as a philosophy, but as, a, as an actual experience. So a great metaphor for that is, is, is a mirror and reflections in the mirror. So if, if I was to hold the mirror, a, a, a small mirror over these flowers, and, and then take it outside and put it over some cow shit, you know, the mirror isn't sighing with relief and being disgusted when it's held over animal droppings. The, the mirror reflects everything. But the reflections themselves, do they exist? That's, and, and you start to think about that and well, they do exist, they're the dynamic energy of the mirror, but there isn't anything in there but the mirror, the purity of the mirror. So this is a very powerful metaphor to recognize the inseparability of data, thoughts, emotions and circumstances, and your fundamental basis. The only reason you don't recognize it right now is because you've only been focusing on the descriptions, the reflections in the mirror. And what you've been doing for your entire life is to try and rearrange the reflections in the mirror to make the mirror more perfect. You're working on nothing, which is why the results are very elusive. If you work on nothing, the results, generally speaking, are going to be nothing. And, you know, I'm preaching to the choir. We've, we've trained ourselves exhaustively in trying to rearrange our thoughts, emotions and circumstances in order to locate well-being. And you know it doesn't work. And that's not to say that, that you know, stri conventional striving isn't valuable, because it is. It's much better to be healthy, it's much better to have love, lo wonderful friends, much better to have lots of money in your bank account than no money, clean food, clean water, all of these things. But it's very clear that even if you are able to establish a life of conventional perfection, it's, there's, still, there's still something missing. So I, I would invite you all from the heart to, to test this simple instruction um, one of the most powerful aspects of this training is the support structure. And one, for me, we have hundreds if not thousands of hours of talks and texts 
all available for free on the, on the, in, on the internet, on our website. And after the open meeting, we have people that can load you up with these talks. And if you just listen to these talks, as you're walking around, you're doing just whatever you do, you will start to recognize what's being described here. You are perfect. You are completely perfect, exalted, and you are an emanation of total, blazing, white-hot love. I, I was never told that, ever. I was told, you need to work really hard, you're too fat, you're miserable, you don't... My, my school reports were, could do better. <laughs> I think that was virtually everyone. I was an expert in doing the minimum amount of work possible in order not to get into trouble. That was my strategy in life. Now, what's happened now is that by, f by relying on open intelligence, so what that means is whatever my life provides me, you know, which I have no, I have no choice, I have no control over, you have no control over what the next thought will be, but now you have a choice where you, s you can cease being a victim to whatever's going on and you can practice relaxing and acknowledge open intelligence. It's, it's the most amazing thing. It seems like such a nothing practice. You know, one of the most amazing things is for me to be able to sit in front of a room full of strangers without not having any, anything prepared, feeling totally uh, in love and relaxed and uh, wonderful. I mean, how many people love speaking in front of a group of people? <laughs> not me. I mean, it used to be, I used to show people my hands in the open meeting and I used to be like that. <laughs> I sounded the same, but, but my physical nervousness was, was very evident. I, I used to have to drink the water like this. <laughs> and so you see, th 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 this approach is so different to anything else that you've tried. And th that may well sound like an arrogant statement, but again, the onus is on you to test in your experience. So, for example, the relief from nervousness is not in getting rid of the nervousness. It is in the nervousness itself. The relief from fear is in the fear itself. And, and this is so crucially important to recognize that collectively as a species, we have believed that well-being means that we don't get angry, we don't get depressed, we don't experience physical pain. You know, the, the list is endless. But th these things are what it means to be a human being. This is what unites us. And if you're, if you're seeking for an absence of anything like anger, then you immediately alienate yourself from the other seven billion people on the planet who do experience anger. So this, this training is for everyone. And the terminology is deliberately neutral. So we don't use the word consciousness or love or God or anything like that because every single person in this room has a different opinion about that. Virtually every single war and conflict on the planet is due to those terms. God. So, to return to what I said right in the beginning, you have an opportunity to identify the unifying ground that is the same for everyone on the planet, in your experience, right here, right now. And when you do that, you will naturally find, in your experience, that your, the way you relate to people, the way people relate to you, softens and becomes very, very powerful. So, if you have value systems, you, do, you will start to see through them. So, and, 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 and what you what you see is that rigid value systems are impossible to uphold. Sometimes it's okay to uphold them. Sometimes they appear to be ridiculous. And now it doesn't it doesn't mean that your values disappear, but the ultimate value system is this opening intelligence because it gives you complete spontaneous wisdom and power to say no. You know, just because you've had thousands of years of a, of a particular value system. And at a certain point, you, have, you, you, you stand up and you say, no, this is ridiculous. I am not going to live my life like this, and I'm not going to let anyone else live like that. And, 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 and you become very, very powerful and very, very fearless, all by relying on, on this practice. What you hold dear, what you really passionately believe in, doesn't change. But you must start to see that some people on the planet are going to have it, be equally passionate in exactly the opposite way. They're going to believe exactly the opposite to what you believe. And the, up, up until now, the only way to, to, to reach um, an agreement with these people or peace with these people is to fight until somebody or both people 
are forced to, into a very un, uneasy... Well, this is the best thing that happens is you just get groups of very, very angry people who hate each other. So that, you know, this isn't an option anymore. The way we, the way we um, relate to ourselves and others on the planet, that hasn't changed for thousands of years. So by, by blaming, judging, criticizing ourselves and others, this is the mechanism by which we've tried to affect change on the planet. And it's, it just leads to war, conflict, mistrust. Uh, you, you can see it everywhere. So we, ha we have an opportunity. You know, who is the most important person on the planet? You are. You are the leader that you're looking for. And, and, it, and it, I, it, when I first came to my, my first Balance View Open meeting, there were five people in the room here, this room, Candice and five people. Now, now, this is eight years ago. Eight years, we have hundreds of thousands of people all over the world who are using the Four Mainstays. It's up to us, you know, world peace, really does come about by each one of us taking responsibility to, 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 be, in, to be exemplars of that peace. You, you've, you have all heard that world peace starts with, with myself. But here you're given a tools and a support structure to br actually bring that about. Now for me, that turned my life on its head. From a, a life of complete despair and powerlessness into a life of total power total and complete power. So I would really, you know, test this in your, in your own experience. You will see that well-being and empowerment is present in, in and as every single experience in your life. Especially the things you don't like about yourself.